Alright guys, as promised, I am trying using my ghetto torch burner setup to make potassium thiocyanate. And so what we have here is in one of my stainless cup crucibles. What you're looking at there is I mixed around to make as homogeneous of a mixture as I could. Um, it's 23 grams of anhydrous um, potassium ferrocyanide, 16 grams of sulfur flowers, and 8 grams of um, potassium carbonate. I'm going to put this lid back on. And what this will yield us initially is um, some uh, iron sulfide and we will get potassium thiosulfate as well as um, some um, some cyanide will be produced here as well uh, however we're going to decompose all that so that we'll be left with just the iron sulfide so I guess that's not decomposing and um, or we're decomposing the thiosulfate um, and the um, thiosulfate so what we're doing here is we're heating this up and you want to definitely use the anhydrous um, potassium ferrocyanide for this so if you don't have the anhydrous just stick it in the oven at uh, like 120 C or so for a while you can go hotter if you want just stay below the, the decomp point obviously which I don't know off the top of my head um, that's how I dried mine I just stuck it in the oven it is about 120 130 C somewhere in there um, uh, it took about an hour I've had this dried for about a year that's why I don't remember the exact temperature I used but I'm pretty sure it was right in that range uh, because you don't want any water to be produced in this reaction I mean you can just stick it on the burner beforehand before mixing everything else in with it uh, if you want but I would just be worried about getting it too hot so anyhow uh, we're gonna let this all react and uh, then we need to extract this I'm gonna use some 95% uh, ethanol to do that um, and uh, so I'll be back when it's time to extract all this. I'm just going to check on this here and see what this looks like. The paper I'm following says to go. Oh, there goes our iron sulfide. So that flash, that's because I just let the oxygen in. I said to let this go until this is clear. see it there I don't know what they mean by clear I think maybe everything should melt after the iron sulfide here forms uh, I don't know we'll see this is actually the first time I'm running this reaction so I'm gonna leave the lid off and let that go because that little extra fire on there is not gonna hurt anything so, we'll be back when there's something to report. So, I think this is what <clears throat> the literature meant by clear. Um, th this is from 1895. And you know how that stuff goes. It's not always the most accurate as far as their description. But it, it said to let it go until it was... Um, a solid clear melt and I mean for all the iron that's in here you're never going to get this clear as in crystal clear so I think this is what they're talking about you can see there's a little bit of the um, iron sulfide still going in there so I'm going to let this react until no more little flame bursts pop up you can see like in the back over over on the top right there's still a little fire going there so all the sulfur is not reacted yet uh, and it said after this turns into a, a clear melt like this to uh, 
keep heating it for another 15 minutes. So after that flame dies out, I'm going to let it go for another 15 minutes. And then it says that we want to partially cool this, as in, you know, not all the way. Scrape everything into a beaker, and then we're going to extract the um, thiocyanate out with uh, ethanol that we're going to heat up to the boiling point. So, I'll come back when I'm ready to do that. Alright, so now this is what it looks like in ethanol. Got it heated enough. Now I'm trying to extract it. <clears throat> Don't have the heat on, I just have this cold, because uh, I'm breaking up the lumps right now. Once I get all the lumps broken up, I'll heat this up till just under the boiling point. And then I'm going to probably have to filter this through some cotton, I think, uh, just to get rid of all the fine iron particles out of this. So that'll be the next step. Come back when we're ready to do that. So... Here it is, I'm filtering off the first bit. I thought I had all the clumps broken up, but there were still some in the beaker. Um, so I've got, I've got a little bit more ethanol in there, trying to break up the rest of those clumps. But filtering this first bit through cotton, it's a very, very slow filtration. And uh, simple reason why I am not using my vacuum for this is that all of my vacuum equipment is dirty right now and I'm just too lazy to clean it but um, you can see the filtrate coming through is nice and clear and that's what we want so this is fine it's just gonna take a lot longer so I'll be patient and uh, once there's enough room in this funnel I will come back and you know top it off so yep I'll be back when there's something to report. So that was going much too slow even for me. So what I'm doing is I'm filtering this all through a coffee filter first. And I'm getting a good bit of iron through. You can see the filtrate is now very cloudy. But then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to filter this through the cotton plug that I had started with. And it should go a lot faster. So I am going to come back when it's time to do that. We'll see how that goes. Alright, so this is it being filtered through the cotton. You can see how nice and clear it is compared to this. It's just side by side. This is the stuff we just filtered through the uh, coffee filter. And this is through the cotton. So I'm just filtering this back to the cotton to get rid of all these fine little iron particulates that are floating in here and then we can move on to evaporating the solution down sorry for the background noise people that's my heater going it's very cold out here right now and I just could not take it anymore so I had to turn that on but just bear with me and uh, yeah I'll be back once this is all filtered and we can evaporate it down so here's what our final filtrate looks like. I've got right around 130 milliliters, which is way too much. So I'm going to evaporate this down a good bit. Um, ideally, I would like to see crystals form on it. Now my camera isn't cooperating with me, so that's always nice. There we go. Uh, so I'll evaporate this down until I see some crystals forming and then check it in the fridge for a while and uh, filter it and then evaporate the rest of the filtrate down to get another batch of crystals. And then the paper says to recrystallize it from boiling water. So that's what we'll do. So once this uh, evaporates down and we get some crystals to look at, I'll be back. Alright guys, I've got this evaporated down to right around 75 milliliters. You can see how cloudy it's gotten. I don't have any crystals forming on top yet. Here's a top view of it. There's no crystals forming yet, but it is so cloudy. I'm pretty sure that I will be able to pull something out of this solution just by cooling it. Um, so I think I'm going to let this go down 
just a little bit more and then I'm going to throw it in the fridge for a while. So, like I said before, I'm going to come back when there's some crystals for you all to see. Okay, guys, I finally have some product here to show you. Um, as I suspected, this is an absolutely horrendous yield. It's still damp. Um, so I cannot obviously weigh it to figure out how uh, exactly bad of a yield this was. Uh, I have a feeling, though, that this was merely due to the fact that I was using my ghetto burner heating method with just a, a single flame of a, a torch instead of on a stove um, like I should have. Um, however, I talked my wife into getting me a new canister and a new um, propane stove. So I'm going to run this reaction again. And I'm going to try it with the proper equipment, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, this is our product. This is potassium thiocyanate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this in the Petri dish as it sits, and I'm going to throw it into a desiccator, and uh, that's really all there is to it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.